What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and once in a while I'll throw in a clickbaity list too. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our list? Today we're talking about seven discontinued gems that you can still find. Stick around. So we're back with another list today. This is seven discontinued gems that you guys can still find. Uh, this is a follow-up to that first list I did a couple months back. Uh, that was a pretty big hit, at least for my channel being the size that it is. Uh, lots of comments from you guys, lots of views, and some great suggestions as well. You guys had a lot to say on the topic. So I guess we could call this episode two. So some basic guidelines for this list. None of these whiskeys are still in production. They could have been limited releases, they could have been special editions, or they might have just been straight up discontinued. If they came and went and they were good, then they qualify for this list. Now this is likely to become an ongoing series just because there's so many whiskeys out there that just don't stick around. And of course, I can only fit so many on any given video, which means I do want to hear from you guys. After you watch the video, let me know if I've left anything out or if there's anything that you guys want to see on my next list. So put it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. It could be any whiskey of any style, just one that you enjoy and one that you wish you could continue to buy into the future. Um, yeah, so with all that said, why don't we hop into our list? And in the meantime, if you guys could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. We're going to start things off with an honorable mention. This was a whiskey that you guys suggested from my last video. Uh, this is a Highland whiskey. We're looking at the Old Pulteney 17. And while we're at it, we might as well throw in the Old Pulteney 21 as well. Uh, these were both discontinued back in, I think, 2017 or 2018, something like that. Uh, apparently because the brand was low on stock. Later on, they brought out the 15 and the 18-year-old as replacements in the core range. Uh, the 12 did stick around, but I think they changed the formula a little bit on that one. Can't be too sure, but um, yeah, the 17 and the 21, just absolute beauties. Uh, they were salty, they were buttery, they were coastal, very bright, just, yeah, wonderful stuff. These are just honorable mentions for a couple reasons. First off, I don't have the proper bottles to display, although that shouldn't really matter. Uh, more importantly is the second part, which is these are getting pretty expensive. The whole point of this list is whiskeys that you can still buy, but whiskeys that hopefully you can still buy at a reasonable price. At least in my market, these are pricing themselves out at this point. So if you do happen to find them and they're at a reasonable price, I would say pick them up. I promise they won't stay affordable too much longer. And, you know, Old Pulteney is not what it used to be. It's still a good brand. Uh, I like the 15. I haven't had the 18, but... That old core range, not only were they affordable, they were absolutely delicious. Um, yeah, so highly recommended. Honorable mention, Old Pulteney, 17 and 21. Our number seven is an Island whiskey. It's been entirely matured in bourbon barrels and it's 17 years old. I'm talking about the Highland Park Full Volume. Now, in the past, I've made a lot more noise about Highland Park Dark Origins, and that still is my favorite HP. But this one is a close second. I prefer Dark Origins just because it's sherried and I like my sherried whiskeys, but this one is more of an honest, no frills, slightly more challenging Highland Park. Um, we've got some great woody notes in here, some great vanillas, uh, it's got a slightly peaty kick to it, and we have great multi profile. Now Highland Park doesn't have the best history with giving us craft presentations, so it is nice to have a decent ABV on this one as well as an age statement. Uh, I believe this one's still pretty widely available. As far as I know, the price isn't shooting up too much, at least in my market, so it is one to check out. So our number seven is going to be Highland Park, full volume. Our number six is going to be a pretty recent release. It only came out last year in 2020. It's part of a new collection of whiskeys called the Stories Collection. This is Glenlivet's Illicit Still. Now, Glenlivet does get a lot of hate. A lot of their whiskeys do tend to be pretty dull and mass marketed, but every so often they do come out with something inspired. This is one of them. This is big, it's bold, it's beautiful stuff with a hefty ABV of 48%. Great price tag on this too. Definitely an affordable whiskey and presumably the future releases that we get from this stories collection are also going to give us a craft presentation. So we can look forward to those. In the meantime, this one I think is still pretty available, although I think stocks are starting to thin out in some markets. So keep your eyes out for this one. Number six, Glenlivet Illicit Still. Our number five is another Island Whiskey. This one's been rumored to be discontinued for some time now. Uh, it's the only cast strength whiskey in their current lineup. I'm talking about the Talisker 57 North. This whiskey is pretty much what you expect it's going to be. If you're familiar with Talisker, we get the, the minerals, the salt, the peat, the honey, the pepper, basically all the same flavors that we get in, for example, the 10. But this one, of course, is gonna be a lot punchier. The extra ABV really ramped up the flavors here. 
Of course, this will depend on your market, but I don't think this one's too hard to track down, at least for now. Uh, where I live, the price on this hasn't shot up too dramatically yet, so it might be one to grab while you still can. Our number five, Talisker 57 North. We're heading to the Highlands for our number four. This is a special release, and you actually have a series of these special releases that you can choose from. I'm talking about the Deanston Cast Strength Vintage Collection. The one I've got with me today is a Bordeaux Mature 2008 release, bottle 2017, so an 11-year-old. Uh, this one comes in at 58.7% ABV, which is very respectable. Uh, but they also have stuff like brandy finishes, different types of sherry maturation, so you can take your pick. These whiskeys are big and bold, they're usually quite fruity, of course that depends on the cask influence, and underneath all that cask play you tend to have a bit of that Deanston magic as well. Of course I haven't had all of these vintage releases, but the ones I've had have been really good. They're also usually very fairly priced, at least at the time of their release. So definitely ones to check out if you see them. Our number four is going to be Deanston Vintage Releases. Next up we have a series of limited edition whiskeys that I've only recently discovered. These ones are also cast strength, also delicious. I'm talking about the Glen Scotia annual releases for the Campbelltown Malts Festival. Last year's was a peated port finish, this year's is a Bordeaux finish. I think we had a rum finish a few years back, didn't try that one. I have had these two though and they're both fantastic. The new one from 2021, the Bordeaux, should definitely still be pretty widely available. If you're lucky, you might still be able to find some of those older releases at a reasonable price. I know that stocks are starting to thin out on those but they're usually not too overpriced when you do come across them. So definitely wants to check out Glen Scotia Campbelltown Malts releases number three. All right, we're getting pretty high up on the list here. This is one that I know a lot of you out there do like because on my last video when I asked for suggestions, this was probably one of the most suggested whiskeys from you guys. I'm talking about the Aaron 14 year old. This is a beautiful whiskey, it's a great showpiece for the Aaron House style, it's quintessential Aaron, and yeah, it's a damn shame that this got discontinued back when Aaron rebranded in 2019. I've said this in the past, Aaron is at its best when it has an age statement. Right now with their current lineup, we don't have anything between the 10 year old and the 18 year old, so hopefully down the line we do get some kind of teenage expression in there. In the meantime, we're stuck seeking out these old bottles of the 14. This one is tart, it's fruity, it's vibrant, it's clean. Back when this was in production, it was pretty fairly priced. Nowadays, I think prices are starting to climb. Now, keep in mind, this is not like a super premium whiskey, so don't overpay for it. But if you see it at a decent price, grab it. Number two is going to be Aaron, 14-year-old. Our number one whiskey has something of an interesting backstory. Um, it's not exactly discontinued. Uh, this is a very popular whiskey. It's still very widely available and it's actually still going to be sold down the line, but the stuff that we get in the future is likely not going to be quite the same as the stuff we have now. Uh, this is the Glendronic 18 year old. Yeah, interesting story here. Between 1996 and 2002, the Glendronic distillery was closed and 18 years after 1996, uh, the brand decided to keep going with the 18 year old expression. But with each passing year, the whiskey inside got older because they didn't have anything younger to balance it out with. The bottle I've got here is from 2017, which would make it a 21 year old. I also have a few other bottles in my collection from different years. Um, this is a stunning whiskey and I'd be very surprised if they managed to match this quality moving forward. In fact, I'm pretty sure they can't. I'm sure many of you guys know about the recent controversy where Glendronic decided to start chill filtering their whiskeys. Uh, that did not go over well with fans and it shouldn't. We don't need chill filtration, but that's another argument for another video. Um, but what that means for us is that these old bottlings of the 18 year old are worth picking up. So not only are these older ones not chill filtered, but the age of the whiskey inside the bottle is going to be substantially higher than what's advertised on the label, which is pretty cool. Definitely makes it a worthwhile pickup. Not only that, we have these rich, robust, intense sherry notes and a bit of that old school Glendronic magic. Really love this stuff. It's a beautiful sherry whiskey, but the issue with this one is that we're already starting to see the prices climb. Where I live, it's still affordable and close enough to that original price that I'll still pull the trigger, but hesitantly. I don't know what it's like in your market, but if it's still somewhat close to that original price, it might be worth considering. So, number one, Glendronic 18. Okay, that's it for today's list, guys. I hope you liked it. All of these whiskeys are beautiful, all of them limited, but you might still be able to find some of them. Now, if you do plan on seeking them out, I wish you good luck, and I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Now I know a lot of you stuck around to find out what's in my glass and I'm not going to waste your time, I'm not going to keep you waiting. This is none other than the Bunnahaven Moin Limited Release. Uh, this is a cast strength peated Bunnahaven and there's actually several versions of it out there. Mine happens to be the Brandy Expression, this one's a 12 year old, it came out a few years back so it's not one of the newer expressions. 
Uh, but any of these Moin special releases that you happen to stumble across are likely to be good. They're all top shelf stuff. Now I didn't put this on the proper list just because it is pricier than the other stuff that I talked about and I wanted to keep this list pretty affordable for you guys. But I do like it and I did want to include it in some capacity so little bonus for you guys, Bunahab and Moin limited release. So what did I miss? You guys gave me some great suggestions last time and I'm sure there's still plenty of other discontinued gems that we can discuss in future videos. So if there are whiskeys that you miss or whiskeys that you wish you could still buy, let me know what they are down in the comments. And that's it for me today guys, I hope you enjoyed the list, do me a favor, the usual like, comment, subscribe down below. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye guys.